Join me now for a new player construction showcase, my fellow Going Medieval fans, and prepare to have your mind blown away. This is the most detailed and elaborate settlement I have had the pleasure of recording for one of these showcases. My name is Peter and I want to thank Wolfus for sharing his masterpiece settlement with us. Do note, it takes 5 minutes to load and brings my game performance down to 9 frames in the screenshot mode and only about 20 in the normal mode. So this is about as much construction as the game can handle and Wolfus has definitely taken it to the extreme. If you want me to show off your settlement or structure, send me the screenshot or even better the save file at the email address in the description where you will also find the links to previous episodes and all my guides and let's plays for Going Medieval. This building here is the center keep but that does not mean it is the most intricately designed one as some of the other parts of the settlement slash castle are far more complex and much bigger. Originally, Wolfus made a much smaller settlement, but after losing his save, ouch, restarted and made this mind-blowing build after taking inspiration from 15th and 17th century Scandinavian European and Russian architecture. It is based on the concept of settlers moving through walls and buildings, which are integral parts of outer and inner walls. The courtyards between walls and buildings all have their purpose, be that farming, resting or beauty. We will begin our overview here at the entrance, which is guarded by two extremely tall towers, a belt of traps and decorated by an intricate ring-shaped plaza of clay and limestone bricks, and this is actually the combo from which the whole settlement is constructed. The main entrance is made up of the widest and deepest set of reinforced doors I have ever seen anyone use. Five columns wide and seven rows deep, with crosswalks above for archers to shoot enemies as they attempt to breach one layer of defenses after another. Boiling water or oil would be perfect here, but the game does not have those. Yet. On both sides, large guard posts are equipped with weapons and even more traps are located on the inside. Higher levels are also constructed with archer positions in mind with multi-level battlements and two towers. Both of these show exquisite care for detail in their construction with multiple decorations of all types. As for those towers we saw earlier, they are similarly designed, only taller and narrower, with lots of battlements and openings for archers to shoot from. The middle staircase goes up and down a dozen levels all the way to an underground tunnel connecting these towers to the main guard posts inside the front keep. This is where another feature becomes apparent. The whole space inside the walls is not just a path through them, but also storage space and where beds, arms and armor are located. Continuing along these outer walls, we can find another side entrance, also very well defended and something that looks like a bricked up old entrance, which I think is there for more role playing. The corner keeps like this one are simply breathtaking due to the amount of detail in their design. They even have open and closed terraces and let defenders continue along the walls through and around them. Something that was unexpected was this part mausoleum part cemetery integrated into the walls and outside the actual settlement. It is also exquisitely detailed with a good mix of materials and decorations. I can only assume the source material used for inspiration, I mentioned in the intro, is where this placement choice comes from because of what is inside this part of the settlement. And it is definitely where the idea for the design of these towers slash keep slash religious buildings comes from. The top's designs are obviously from the Russian lands with abundant religious ornamentation and four-sided geometric architecture. The keep that marks the side of the wall with numerous windows is between two such religious buildings, both dedicated to individual going medieval religions. The actual shrines, making the temple and church, are in the bottom of these corner keeps and on two levels at that. Because these rooms are decorated with a lot of candles, it is a very good thing the crypt between has actual stockpiles of beeswax making refueling a much easier job. 
Once more we have upper level walkways, even in the design of these temple buildings and the adjoining rooms which are furnished with tables and chairs, but these don't go anywhere and are more for show than use. The middle keep has a more role playing element. These rooms here are set as classrooms of a school complete with a research table standing in for a chalkboard. The other religious tower building slash corner keep has a very similar design to the first one just for the other religion. There is even a set of double small rooms which stand in for a confession booth. Underneath the two levels of shrines we again find beeswax and this time tallow as well for candle fueling. As before on the level of the shrines there are tables and chairs for a sort of post service get together. By going through the walls settlers can access other parts of the settlement and other keeps like this huge bedroom complex on this level of the nearby keep. But what is below is of much more interest and role playing use. At first I didn't get what I was looking at but the wooden fences and hay gave it away. Stables. These might be empty now and there isn't any mechanic for keeping animals in pens in going medieval but Wolfes has this already covered on this level and there is enough room here for dozens of animals. Below this level is more role playing greatness. Dungeons, even cells to take an entire raiding party prisoner or a merchant and his squad of bodyguards. Each cell is just as claustrophobic and small as you would expect it in those times with only a basic hay bed. Add to that the smells and sounds of animals above you and it would be an utterly miserable place to be locked in. The two levels above the stables are both all carbon copied single bedrooms so much so that at first glance I didn't even realize these were two different floors. Above those are two towers and lots of racks for armor and weapons mostly empty. This to some extent breaks the immersion both because they are empty and because they are in the open at the top floor. The other keep has a similar structure but it has no such racks. Its top floor is empty but the one below that is dedicated to production of alcohol with some research and apothecary tables in the mix. I would have to say this is the most flammable building beyond those made only of wood. But again there is no fire yet in the game so it's safe. Now let's finally take a peek at some of the gardens and crop fields. Their design shows meticulous care as if done by a gardener and an exterior decorator all in one. Not only is the mix of plants exact even by color but the placement of trees, paths, path edges and stone fences is calculated to produce the best visual effect. It is here that we find the skeps and some settlers hard at work there. There is an equal number of skeps on both sides of this garden and the production of honey is in full swing. This place however holds another secret. Below these roofs is an outdoor open to air stockpile of linens. I must admit I am puzzled by the choice and location but I will let Wolfus explain in the comments below. And while you are there please remember to click on that like button to help my showcase reach more fans of this game. Let me know what you think of update 3 and this settlement so far and subscribe if you haven't already to see my future videos. As one can expect where there are crops there is also food processing and production. Right here we find on the ground level a kitchen which does not have the number of hearts one might expect for a settlement of this size. Just one and two butchering tables. Next to this is a huge great hall with seats for 50 and above it is an equally impressive library. I must admit this is now my favorite library design. It looks just right. More like how my mind sees a library should be laid out rather than what is it like in real life. And best of all it is directly connected by stairs to sewing, entertainment and sleeping rooms. We even have a settler catching his Z's right now. Going up further we are in for a treat. A massive cartography section with neat stockpiles of steel, gold, silver, metal components and packaged items. <laughs> the last stockpile is definitely not something I was expecting to see. I will take an educated guess here 
that it is more on the role-playing side of things than anything else, which the overkill of four cartography tables points to. Still higher up is a section set out for more racks, maybe a museum, while the last few levels are just for tower structure with battlements and terraces. Looking at the central keep from above, you can notice actual chimneys which match the position of the kitchens down below. The beautifully designed long angled outside roofs give this keep its totally unique look. The entire setup with the mix of clay and limestone bricks works out great in making the whole settlement stand out among similar settlements made from a single material. This section here with four separate crop fields, the tall middle keep and front thick walls does give off a feel of a Japanese style castle especially to any veteran of Total War Shogun 2 like me. It may not have been the intention, but it is the result. One of the most interesting and cool looking features of this part of the settlement, to me at least, is this raised and enclosed walkway, which spans the entire fields from center keep to the entrance gates. At the edge of the crop fields, there are again small gardens of trees and berry bushes, as well as herb gardens in the middle where there are also workbenches for meat drying. The rest of the fields have a wide range of plants, while the rooms off to the edges and next to the walls are set up for production of stimulants, which makes the whole production train quite fast. All the barrels show the other side of this, because it all stockpiles at the foot of the brewing workstations, but you cannot have every benefit and no downside no matter which setup you choose. Hauling everything away is a time-consuming affair, especially because of the settlers' inclination to carry only a small fraction of their maximum weight capacity. To keep the efficiency going, there are even beds and dining tables close by, as evident by the two sleeping settlers. Here in the back, there is another heavily defended side gate, which leads to a courtyard where the merchant stalls are located as well as the caravan halt. We can see that some trade was done here some time ago, as there are seeds, saplings and honey just laying about. There are so many stimulants on this level that not only is the storage space inside the walls full, but there is spillover here on the outside in this sort of enclosed space with a great door and low wall. Another set of production workbenches are actually located in the main crop field courtyard forges and furnaces, which are part of open workshops, meaning no bonus productivity but a nice role-playing look. So where does all this food and metal go? Let me show you. In the center of the courtyard there is a set of stairs, which leads down, and if we follow the underground corridors, we eventually find ourselves in one of the food basements. Nothing is left to chance when it comes to stability due to heavy overhead supports. There are shelves for only raw food here, and in the other such food basements, four in total on this level. Another interesting development is the fact that what we have failed to find so far is actually located here, the workshops, right below the crop fields, and each one is specialized for production of certain items, arms, armor, clothing, and metal components. Below this level is another one dedicated to item storage. These are below the food basements and hold untold riches in material and crafted goods with a certain amount of raw materials. It is one of the rare disorganized places in this settlement. Do note this isn't the only place food basements exist. There are several more at this spot, which is, as you probably guessed, right below the kitchens. In the kitchens themselves, finished meals are kept and settlers can take them into the huge great hall to eat. If you have been wondering, is there ice production in this settlement? There is, it's just down in the depths, all the way in fact at the granite level. This is of course to have the coldest possible space for ice making and a lot of production has been going on here, evident by the large amounts of it stockpiled. Two rooms, two ice boxes each. If I keep the layers at this level, but move the camera up, this lets us spot the settlers and you can see just how far apart they are and over what area. This absence of the settlement's walls and items can actually give you a different viewpoint on just how huge it is. 
So now I will work our way up slowly one level at a time and the scale of it will sink in better for you. There is one part I missed to show you yet and while this keep is almost the same as its twin from the other side of the settlement, on its lower level it does not have dungeons, but actually stockpiles of different materials under lock and key. I don't know about you, but I can't stop appreciating the craftsmanship of these keeps. Side, front, top, inside, all over. There are just so many details to it and almost no spot is left simple and bare, but ornamented or just visually changed after construction using the content update 3 controls for building elements. In case you are still not familiar with everything the update has introduced in the game, I have a full video overview of it, link up here and below. The center keep also has many details I personally didn't notice until my third or fourth pass over it as there is simply too much to even try to take in all at once. Like for example these chimneys above the open forge workshops in the main courtyard. It is such an elegant and simple design which fits so perfectly that unless you are really looking at it, it just blends into the overall picture seamlessly. Yes, that was a brazier at the top of it. Now I could spend another hour going through the minute details of each of these keeps and courtyards, but I think we covered most of it. What I want to show you now are some of the stats. This was played in the standard game mode, but difficult difficulty, <laughs> not the best word choices there devs. Map type is valley and the total playtime, this overview included, is just shy of 13 hours, which to me is nuts, so little time and so much built in just over 500 in-game days, which is longer than 10 years. There were some casualties, but this is the highest number of settlers ever at 24, while almost a thousand raiders were killed in 47 raids so far. After watching this episode of my player construction showcase, I am sure you are feeling both inspired and odd, so it's the perfect time to go and apply your newfound construction ideas. When you fully realize them, send me an email to the address in the description and I will showcase your settlement. If you need any helpful guides and tutorials or want to see more such showcases, use the cards shown here and come back next time for another mind-blowing experience like this one. Thank you for watching and happy gaming!